good afternoon everyone and welcome to the uh, this session of uh, the rafa live it's a live set program that we have every saturday from starting at 3 pm in the afternoon uh, this is a program that addresses uh, issues that all of us face uh, on our uh, daily work routine and uh, it's a very uh, short program in the sense we we discuss things for about uh, half an hour 40 minutes very rarely extending to an hour so we address things which are of a very pertinent nature which are relevant for our work on a daily basis and we try to address some of the problems that continuously trouble us we have also discussed in past some of the uh, newer topics that have come up come about in our uh, area of work for example uh, patient reported outcome measures or patient reported experience measures so so we we try to address uh, topics which are uh, which are new which uh, or which need to be looked at from a new perspective so today's topic is one such where we need to look at it from a perspective which is not the usual perspective to look at the fire safety so the recorded version of this session will be available on the rafa learners portal like all other sessions and this i think is the 40th if i remember the, it correctly so 40th session that we are doing today so coming to today's uh, session the session is fire safety in hospitals and we are specifically looking at it from a statutory requirements point of view uh fire is a problem in the hospital uh, it's been a problem in the hospital in fact everywhere it's a problem but uh, in the hospital it is uh, to be dealt with uh, in a certain manner and i uh, i'm sure we are all aware how it needs to be addressed so let's look at it so this is the uh, scheme of presentation and uh, the uh, it, we will talk about fire safety in hospitals the context of it so in what context we need to look at it uh, we will discuss uh, parts of national building code which are applicable to uh, fire safety we will look at what are the state regulations uh, for uh, towards or for the purpose of fire safety and what are the other related regulations that may be applicable in your setup uh, may not be applicable in certain hospitals and then we will look at national electrical code uh, please remember that uh, one of the important uh, the trigger or a source of fire or a reason for fire is electrical system so we have uh, overloaded overheated uh, electrical system that uh, sometimes uh, in fact that many times leads to fire so national electrical code also comes into the picture so coming to the context uh, one of the major hazards that is faced by the hospital is fire now uh, it's a major hazard because fire incidents usually lead to loss of property and many times also lead to loss of, loss of uh, life uh, incidents occur frequently which is the sad part of the story that despite whatever has been said and done and whatever we have been doing in our Uh, professional life and the way we have been managing this particular aspect of running a hospital the fire incidents happen fairly regularly and they can affect all types of hospitals so no one is immune no one can't say that we are uh, we are uh, uh, a government hospital and therefore we have uh, less chances of getting this or we are a private or a corporate or a trust or a whatever hospital so every hospital is equally vulnerable and even the best of the prepared hospitals unless they have a system where they continuously learn about the gaps in fire safety they would also remain vulnerable especially where the gaps are and the gaps are not addressed so usually the preparedness of hospitals is not adequate for fire risk mitigation and this happens because uh, we don't uh, i mean i have been uh, i have been doing the consulting for hospitals uh, for the purpose of operations and for uh, management and also been assessing hospitals as part as uh, the nabh assesses for a long time of course i don't do it nowadays so what i have seen is that the preparedness of hospitals for handling or for addressing the fire risk is essentially to meet the minimum requirements that the local fire department wants now please remember that the uh, and we will also cover in one of the slides this aspect 
that whatever is mandated by the regulation is always the bare minimum that needs to be done now a lot of times even that bare minimum is implemented with the corners cut and with whatever uh, with whatever limitations so therefore the preparedness is uh, many times it's not adequate and uh, i have tracked this since january 2020 there is one major fire in a hospital in india every month now this major fire is of such magnitude that you uh, the, the it becomes a national news and uh, uh, so you can imagine if uh, if there is one such major fire which comes becomes the national news there will be numerous smaller fires which don't figure in the media reports or which don't come to our attention so the problem is real the risk is real and we need to address it from the risk mitigation point of view that we proactively assess where all there is a possibility what practices we have in the hospital which uh, which kind of uh, expose us to this risk and how do we address that apart from of course meeting the statutory requirements so in today's presentation we are looking at the statutory requirements and let's focus there uh, the other aspects of uh, fire risk mitigation uh, we have covered in past and uh, 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 we will also be uh, taking up these those preparations or those uh, requirements implementational requirements so the frequent culprit is also the electrical system and the negligent behavior by far these are the two reasons for fire that we have Uh, observed commonly, and there is also a study uh, which was recently published, uh, where they have pointed out the reasons. In fact, I think the chief fire officer of Nagpur uh, city has uh, done some work on that, and he did find that uh, the presence of of inflammable vapors in the intensive care units was one of the reason why the fire happens in many. Uh, of the hospitals especially when we had this uh, covid uh, covid pandemic uh, where the use of hand sanitizers was uh, had increased considerably so electrical system and negligent behavior are two reasons or the two frequent culprits for fire incidents the fire services come under the jurisdiction of municipal bodies as one of their functions so this is specified or this is stipulated in article 343w of the constitution and from where uh, uh, it comes that the fire services come under the jurisdiction of municipal bodies and obviously if it is municipal bodies then also the state governments so the fire prevention and protection is a state subject and the rules are laid as the state regulations uh, or sorry this is not of this is or or in the municipal bylaws so these are the two uh, references or these are the two sources where you can find what rules are applicable to your hospital as far as fire safety is concerned uh, now uh, the fire services are organized by the state governments and the union territories at the state level the industries are required to have their own captive specialized fire services as required uh, this generally Uh, is uh, the responsibility of the industry itself even though uh, whenever there is a response to a fire emergency or a fire incident the response is expected or it is required to be coordinated by all fire fighting agencies in the area so you may have uh, industrial fire fighting unit or you may have a fire fighting unit of the state government or a, or a, or even the armed forces or the services facility these are all pooled together for fire fighting purposes that's a operational arrangement uh, as far as the establishments are concerned the industries are required to have their own captive specialized fire services because many of the industries where they handle inflammable materials or uh, chemicals or petroleum products or such things uh, they may have or they may need a very specialized manner of fighting those kind of fires so therefore it is interested with them and it is uh, implemented by frequent inspections as it is required in the factory act so uh, what are the statutory provisions that are applicable as far as the fire safety is concerned 
so the statutory provisions are in the form of guidelines and codes and here we will talk about the national building code and the national electrical or electricity code then these are in the form of state acts and rules so there are uh, uh, state acts and the state rules which pertain to fire safety and these state acts and rules will uh, usually uh, Uh, for the uh, for uh, implementational purposes and for practical purposes they will demand compliance with the guidelines so uh, the first point of guidelines and codes even though it is a guideline even though it is it is meant as a guidance but the moment it gets in included in the state act so the state act demands compliance and therefore it no longer remains a guidance then it becomes a compliance requirement it is a licensing or a or a, a, a statutory requirement that has to be met and the state since it is stipulated in the state acts so uh, the enforcement is by inspections and uh, all of us are aware and all of us know that the fire noc is given only after the inspection is carried out by the local fire department so the first uh, and the basic uh, model code that we have to uh, look at is the national building code and this code in uh, india addresses the building construction and fire safety and it is a document which is published uh, by the bis so you can find it on their website uh, parts of it are also freely downloadable and if you make effort to search you might find the entire document which can be downloaded it's a guideline applicable all over the country and uh, in the state uh, jurisdictions it is made applicable through the state acts so there it becomes a compliance and a statutory requirement uh it is published by bureau of indian standards as i have already stated and it has had three uh, editions so far so the first was in 1970 the second edition was 2005 and the current edition is 2016 edition you can also download this it's, it's available but uh, in as part of today's uh, Uh, session uh, i'll also be providing uh, the part 4 of the national building code which pertains to fire safety so the code specifies all measures that will provide that degree of safety from fire which is practical and can be reasonably achieved so uh, in that sense this is uh, this is something that gives you a optimum measures that must be applied uh it is not minimum as uh, as is normally the case with the uh, uh with the uh, with the regulations so this is optimum and therefore we really do not have much scope to cut corners here and uh, through the state acts it uh, insists on compliance with minimum standards of safety so minimum standards of safety to meet those minimum standards of safety what is that is practical and what can be reasonably implemented is the one that is included in the code now this code deals with construction material everything we will be focusing or we will uh, the, uh, the part of our concern is part 4 which deals with fire safety and this this is the document that i have provided as the download <clears throat> so using your uh, login you can access the rafa learners portal and download this now the uh, national building code part 4 that deals with fire and life safety covers guidance by specifying standards for construction of buildings which includes the building material and the uh, fire rating of each material that is used Uh, plumbing specifications electrical installations including wiring and lighting uh, ventilation heating and air conditioning requirements and the standards relating to that uh, safety uh, safety sanitation active and passive fire protection uh, systems it covers uh, demarcation of uh, Uh, you know it covers the guidance by specifying restrictions of buildings so uh, how to demarcate zones classification of buildings based on occupancy for example whether it is a hospital or a, or a, uh, you know internment facility like jail or it is a commercial complex or it is a school or it is a residential so those kind of classification is given it also talks about limitations of height and what should be the fire fighting arrangements for various or rather varying heights of buildings so depending on what is the how tall is the building the fire fighting recommendations are different 
or I should use the word fire safety recommendations are different. The types of building construction according to fire resistance of the structural and non-structural components. And it also talks about the compartmentation and the fire resistance or fire rating of various partitions, including doors. Uh, other restrictions and requirements necessary to minimize danger to life from fire, smoke, fumes, or panic before the buildings can be evacuated. So it is, uh, you can see that it is a, a comprehensive document and it recognizes that safety of life is more than a matter of means of egress and accordingly deals with various matters which are considered essential to the safety of life. Now, uh, what it means is that simply evacuating the building is not the only aim. You also have to address how you're going to uh, ensure safety of life uh, beyond what is beyond the evacuation. The code covers provisions relating to means of egress covering various components, for example, exit routes, the access routes, uh, exit and ex uh, the uh, exit discharge. That means after people have exited the building, how, how they, uh, you know, where they go and how they are uh, organized. Uh, fire protection of various occupancies through portable and fixed firefighting installations. So various occupancies means class of building. Uh, whether used as a school or a hospital or a residential building or a, or a, a commercial complex. Next, we come to the state regulations and uh, state fire prevention and fire safety acts and rules complement the national building code. And they complement in a manner like they they bring, bring in the compliance component of National Building Code. The National Building Code being a guideline doesn't really ask you or doesn't really forces you to implement. But the moment it comes as part of the state code, then it becomes uh, a compliance requirement. The National Building Code provisions are incorporated by various state governments and local bodies. And this incorporation is unfortunately not uniform. So you have to see what is applicable in your state. Uh, the, uh, there are uh, people who join us uh, and do our program even from um, other countries like Nepal and uh, Middle East countries. So for them, uh, the, the provisions of National Building Code are essentially the internationally accepted practices which are required for, uh, for safety of life uh, and for fire safety. So in your country, what is applicable? You could look at the NBC or the National Building Code as is there in India, and then see those provisions are available in which statute in your country. Fire safety usually in all countries is a matter of uh, regulation and compliance is compulsory. So the state rules deal with inspection, enforcing compliance and other administrative procedures required to establish systems and processes. So what should be done is given in the National Building Code and how the state will enforce implementation of what is given in the National Building Code is uh, given in the state rules. So that is how the uh, state rules complement the National Building Code. The onus of maintaining the fire safety installation is the responsibility of the owner or the occupier of the building. So you would have seen, if you take the fire NOC of any state, it simply says that the inspection was carried out on so-and-so date. These provisions are available and the owner or whoever is the person who has applied for the fire NOC is advised to implement the following. So therefore, the fire NOC is always in this format. It says that on the day of inspection, these things were available. But subsequently, if there is a fire incident, you can't go back to fire department and say that, you know, you, you inspected and you found everything was right. So because that's not sufficient. Clearly, if something is installed today and working, there is no guarantee that it will continue to be working six months later. So therefore, the onus always is on the owner or the occupier of the occupancy or the building. Then there are some related, uh, the related regulations. I have uh, given only one example, uh, which is the Factories Act, because in some way it is relevant. So there is a Central Factories Act, and there are state, uh, state-wise, there are state factories rules. Now, in these state factories rules, 
the uh, requirements for fire safety are defined so if your hospital is part of uh, it is a hospital that is part of our industrial uh, organization or industry organization then these some of these provisions may be applicable to you though the factories act per se and the state factories rules per se are not available to a hospital which is not part of such organization uh now let us look at some of the codes that are applicable uh these codes are published by the bis that is bureau of indian standards there are more than 150 codes pertaining to various uh various uh, requirements uh, some of the examples that i have given are a code of practice for life safety of building now this essentially tells you what should be done and how it should be done it's a code by the bis again not mandated but if you look at the state government or state act it will say that you should have implemented state, uh, the bis code so in that sense a code even though it, it is not mandated in the code itself but it gets mandated through the state act uh, electrical generating and distributing stations so your transformers and distribution uh, fire uh, the power distribution uh, switch gear switch installations etc uh fire detection and alarm systems we are very familiar with these things first aid fire uh, extinguishers uh, internal hydrants and hose reels so there are standards for just about everything that pertains to the fire safety there is the codes are also there for temporary structures and pandals so if you are making a temporary hospital uh, for example uh, a field hospital or a hospital which is meant to address the huge influx of of uh, of uh, covid patients so even for that kind of a structure the code is already existing and it has been exist in existence for a long time so we, we need to be aware that there is a requirement for compliance there too then fire protection and safety signages uh, gaseous fire extinguishing systems etc so these are some of the examples on the uh, bis uh, site you could find these codes Uh, some of these may be freely available but others are usually the prized publications from bis and uh, bis being a government organization usually the prices are in the range of you know hundreds of rupees I and mean, then maybe a couple of 100 100 200 rupees they are not very extensive documents but uh, these are to be referred to as applicable then there are some industry standards which are specifically Uh, you no know, made for a particular industry for example oil industry safety directorate that is oisd uh, gives the standards for oil and natural gas industry uh, similarly in the armed forces there are specific fire safety requirements in the ammunition dumps and ammunition depots so there may be specific standards that may be applicable for other industries these are not specifically applicable to the hospitals but i have stated here is actually to uh, just uh, to complete the canvas of uh, the statutory requirements that exist for the purpose of fire safety next we come to the national electrical code on the rafa live we have had a session on national electrical code i have covered this particular code in great detail there uh, it is also like national building code is intended to be advisory but uh, the central and the state electricity rules which are there which are mandatory will demand compliance to national electrical code so in a way the code also becomes mandated uh, so these are the guidelines which can be immediately adopted for use they are expected to serve as a model for adoption in the interest of safety and economy and with the intent to keep electrical installation practices par with the best practices Uh, there are many small details that are there as a hospital management professionals we need not know it but we should know that there is such a code that exists we should know whenever you are getting your electrical system repaired or uh, you know installed or you have a major installation or major work in the electrical system you must ask either if you are in charge then you must ask if you are not in charge then ask tell the person who is in charge to ensure that the installation that is being done follows the requirements of national electrical code because if the electrical system is not installed correctly then this can become a source of uh, concern for fire safety so in the national electrical code the 
part 3 that is part 3 section 4 deals with medical establishment including hospitals so uh, there are detailed requirements of uh, electrical system in the medical establishments and uh, i am going to share this document with you so you can download it and refer to it whenever you are getting the getting into the electrical uh, systems requirements the so the electrical code deals with wiring it deals with specifications for wires uh, specific how the wiring should be conducted how the earthing should be provided those kind of requirements it deals with equipment selection it deals with earthing it deals with lightning and protection against surge it deals with the energy efficiency and safety uh now this national electrical code obviously cannot be uh, read in isolation so there are associated documents that need to be referred to when you are implementing it again i am saying these are not the requirements which are implemented by the hospital management or hospital administration people but because of the nature of our job we will end up collaborating with other professionals other experts maybe electrical engineers or people who are doing this work to get work done and being in charge of the hospital it is it will be our responsibility to ensure that these codes have been followed correctly so these are some of the codes uh, you can uh, the presentation will be given as a download so you can refer to them separately next is the requirement of electrical safety audit uh, this is a part of safety program of the hospital so like we do uh, the uh, facility safety audit so this is also part of facility safety audit uh electrical faults as i've said earlier are major causes of fire in the hospitals and uh, they pose serious threat to patients staff and public hospitals uh, hospital typically houses those unable to take care of themselves and therefore the electrical safety becomes even more important further the biomedical equipment that we have in the hospital is sensitive to quality of power supply so your electrical system should be able to supply the quality of power that is essential for the equipment otherwise you will end up with the equipment damage uh, esa that is electrical safety audit is also a accreditation requirement so in the fifth edition of nabh standards there is a specific requirement that electrical safety audit must be conducted in the hospital once every year and as part of uh, that requirement the electrical safety audit should cover the quality of power and quality of power will be in terms of uh, the stability that is whether there are surges or there is a stable power supply uh, voltages the uh, the frequency of power and availability of power and this will be applicable to all sources of power that means what you receive from the state grid and also from the your own generating capacity so you may have generators or you may have solar systems uh, which are generating power uh, the quality parameters are applicable even to those it deals with validation of cable and switch gear uh, installed it also requires you to do what is called infrared thermography so this particular is a specialized camera that is uh, basically a infrared camera and it identifies the hot spot in your uh, electrical system so wherever there is a hot spot that area is the or that point in the electrical system is the one where the temperature can rise to an extent where it becomes a fire hazard so that is why infrared thermography is done uh, you need to do earthing system validation from the electrical safety point of view and the physical inspection of electrical installation to the last mile so to, to the last mile means you start the uh, electrical system inspection from the point the power uh, lands in your hospital so typically a transformer and from that till the uh, the last uh, the user so if you are for example if there is a, a hot air blower working in the ward so the cable which connects the blower to the plug point on the wall is included in your uh, physical inspection as part of facility safety audit uh, so in this presentation uh, sorry in this uh, session what we are giving as a download is this particular presentation will be there 
Then the NBC Part 4, Fire and Life Safety document is there. Uh, and National Electrical Code, Section 4, Medical Establishments is also there. And the National Disaster Management Authority, Hospital Safety Guidelines. Uh, I have not referred to these guidelines in the presentation, but there is one section that deals with fire safety in this guideline. And I thought it will be a good idea to share this document. Otherwise, also, you can download it freely from the NDMA website, but we are also providing it from uh, as part of the resource material for this session. So thank you very much.